Hi, good morning. Um, we, uh, Vidya and I, we belong to Pradeep Sashdeva Design Associates and uh, I have been engaged with this company for the past uh, 20 plus years in the capacity of an architect and Vidya is also an architect and her expertise lies in landscape design and uh, she now has a company of her own and has ventured out on her own but uh, PSDA or Pradeep Sajdeva Design Associates has been very close to all of us so whether you are a part of the studio or not um, we are all completely attached to the studio so just to give you a little bit of background about uh, PSDA <coughs> It, uh, the inception of the studio was in the, uh, the mid-1980s in a studio which was uh, based out of Khirki village which is in Delhi and uh, from there we moved on to uh, Ayanagar which is where we are currently. It's also an urban village in Delhi and we've been there now for about 18 to 19 years we've been there. We've been situated over there and I think as a practice primarily um, the principal architect Pradeep Sachdeva, his ideology has always been uh, very contextual. So whatever architecture we practiced, whether it was urban design or landscape design or hospitality or even a residence, it was always uh, contextual, which in simple terms means that uh, one is respecting the land you're building on, one is respecting the materials you have at hand which are locally available, you're respecting the person who's the end user, which was, I think, a very important uh, driving force for us. So it was never an ego sort of a thing that we have to project this project as a PSDA project. It had to be a project for the person it was being built for, uh, for the place it was being built at. So uh, it, it was a very holistic sort of a, a dimension to the whole project. That was the approach uh, Pradeep Sachdeva had to all the projects that we uh, did at the studio. For example, uh, some of the projects that we built, like the Lehart is one of them which was done in the early 1990s. Uh, it, it reflects the simplicity and the strong sense of design that we always approached with. So the site required for a certain architecture for that place, the function of the place was overtook what, what he thought of himself as an architect. So that was a very important thing. Um, then we have projects, hospitality, for example, Taj Theog is there. So that's a completely different sort of thing. So you will never find any of our projects which are similar. They all belong to the place and belong to the people who are using it. And I think the latest example that I can give is perhaps uh, the redevelopment of Chani Chonk which was an urban scale project, a very challenging project because there were so many things that had to be tied together. But I think he never lost his focus of who he was building that project for. So uh, that was the whole nature of the practice essentially. It was extremely contextual. That was the idea behind it. Throughout the many, I think past 10 years, we have always had an attempt to uh, you know, put our work together somehow never really happened, we were busy with projects, something or the other always came up. But I think uh, when we lost Pradeep Sajdeva, this was in uh, the summer of 2020, post his demise, it really was a trigger for all of us that we need to, uh, you know, share all this bo his body of work with the world. And hence we thought of, uh, you know, creating an archive. And we chanced upon curating for culture and creating personal archives, which was done by um, Ishita and Vallabhi. And thanks to them, we really kind of put our thoughts together and we uh, kind of structured what we wanted to do. And the workshop that we did with the CPA, uh, creating personal archives, really gave us an insight as to how to deal with the archives. Because I think as a concept, our studio completely believes in knowledge sharing. There's nothing hidden. It's always been an open door sort of a policy. And the idea was to share whatever we had, all the knowledge we had, and share the body of work with everybody. And in that whole process, like uh, my colleague Vishvesh Viswanathan, who's a, a teacher at Srishti, he, he's a faculty member there. <clears throat> he and I, through the whole process, realized uh, the multifaceted personality, the eclectic man that Pradeep Sajdeva was. 
So the archive was not only going to be about his body of work as an architect, but about so many other things, which is what brought us to this archival box, which was what us, brought us to his, you know, his personal material memory, as one would want to call it. So that was the whole point of this, because as a as a person, he himself was a very open, big-hearted, generous person, and he always had open doors for people uh, in the studio. And I think this will explain better as and when we go up, go along with each of the items which are there in this archival box. So I think we'll just uh, start unboxing it and uh, walk you through the journey of who Pradeep Sajdeva really was, besides being a great architect. So I'll just begin. Yeah. Why Vidya? Of course. Okay, I thought I would uh, come to it when we come to the item. So Vidya is um, an architect who's been associated with uh, with the studio for 20 years, for over 20 years, and um, she has been working very closely with Pradeep Sashteva. She has worked through him through various landscape projects in specific, and both their love for uh, plants, I would say of trees, of flowering trees, of flowers, of all these things related with the landscape architecture brought them to both of them to co-author two wonderful books that they have put together. And that's a very spe special part of our uh, archive over here. And uh, Vidya over here will give us an insight to what it really took uh, to make the book, the experiences she had, how they really managed to put it together because they're not trained uh, landscape architects, but they have learned on the job, and I think that's the biggest self-learning sort of a curve one could uh, ever have. And the books turned out very, one, I mean, great, and she'll explain more on that as we get along. Let's start with the unboxing. We can come so, to the book later. Yeah. So I'm going to begin with the opening this box. Any architect's, uh, a part, any you know, quintessential part of Pradeep's uh, day used to start with uh, this square pad, which has our uh, the company name printed at the bottom, and it's a square pad used ideally by artists, architects, and all to draw and sketch. But uh, this used to be his way to start his day. And the first thing he would do is he would take a round of our studio, take a round of the gardens, etc. at our studio and he would come and uh, jot down his to-do list. And he used to love doodling and scribbling and all. So this is where all of that happened. So I can just maybe flip through it as you can see. He would. These were where all the ideas, all the concepts of projects perhaps kind of started off. And he would note down things during his meetings, etc. In fact, it's interesting, the sketchbook became like such an interesting thing for uh, everybody at the studio. We all have it, we all use it. Uh, even the clients who would came would start eyeing this in many ways. And it used to be like a gift for them that when they would go, they would also get one of these square pads. So it looks like a simple thing, but it really meant a lot. And. Uh, and I this think, is, you know, an architect is best described by his doodles. Yes. Which is why I was also telling Aarti that, you know, this is the best uh, object to start with talking <laughs> about Pradeep Sajdeva because his, uh, every stroke was so distinctive. And the minute you see his uh, pen and uh, pencil or his notepad, you know that this is Pradeep Sajdeva. So it's a great beginning to the unboxing Absolutely. to start. Absolutely. And his sketches, you know, I used to work with him after he would doodle and sketch and everything and if somebody else actually saw that drawing they would be okay it's a scribble but it used to be spot on I mean when I used to kind of convert that into a drawing format or take it you know further it was just spot on you know so it, it all started from here it all started with his doodles and he used to love using these pencils which is also a part of our uh, one of the items that we have his favorite was using these Karen Dash pencils and you know he was so big hearted every time this was you know 
in the early 90s these weren't really available in the country whenever we used to travel we used to get a bunch full and give it to all of us and i think we still have some of us still have those pencils with us so this was his we thought this would be a nice thing to add to the archival material so this next one is an interesting uh, picture which says a lot actually and even the frame that uh, it sits in so this is a picture of um of a picture being taken of a picture being taken exactly a picture being taken of our studio and the person who's taking the picture is also uh, somebody who has been very who started off to be a client but uh, turned out to be a very very close friend and almost became family to uh, pradeep and to a whole bunch of people in the studio and uh, this picture is being taken by a monk his name is nicholas breland uh, and uh, he's really known as nikki and he's a photographer a well known photographer and he's a head monk in one of the monasteries that we had designed in karnataka and uh, he would he would come to the studio often and this was one of the times he came and said okay i want to take pictures of the studio and in the gardens which boss had created as part of our, of the psda so would you want to add something to that with yeah. what i would like to add is you know the, the what you're seeing being pictured <laughs> is the studio itself the people in the studio and that made up everything from uh, all of us from trainees to uh, uh, the person who used to um, you know supervise the workshop and that sort of a, has become a family to all of us actually we were never really uh, you know there was never a hierarchy actually in the studio everybody was together working as a team and it, it was like a and family in a, and in a way this picture really depicts it, it embodies that whole the spirit uh, that respect the yeah. studio is absolutely and this also brings me to this frame where the picture sits it's it's a wooden frame which is kind of you know with certain joinery etc and why we actually brought this item in was because pradeep was a person who was I mean he had many passions he was a man he was an eclectic man who had many uh, interests in life and he had a passion for furniture and he started uh, uh, a furniture workshop in a small way which grew to be something really big uh, it's known as windmill and uh, this was way back in our khirki days that's when the whole process started so windmill which is the part of uh, you know the organization which makes furniture is it's well known in the city and beyond as well and uh, uh, yeah we i mean we create furniture pieces and they are known to use good wood and it's it was a part it was his passion he would always roam around the gardens go to the workshop look at what's been made what lakdi has been bought what wood has been bought from uh, various places and uh, you know then move to the studio to make his list in the notepad so this Did means a lot to ask you about the box itself so i was just coming to that that uh, in fact uh, a take off from that is this box itself i would say is an item for the archive because it has been made at the uh, it has been made at windmill and uh, you can see the name also written over there it's a part of the thing and in fact these boxes were made at one point of time and we used to do a lot of interior design projects and all our you know clocks swatches etc and mat other materials were stored in this so we have these in our library over there this box after box and it's been made with staining with uh, color etc so this is a part of in fact you can see it's a part of the archival box itself the box is a part of the archival box yeah so i'll move on to the next one so as i said uh, nicholas or nikki as we called him uh, he started out to be a client but grew to be a very very close friend and that was the nature of uh, pradeep i think the lines between being a client and being a friend started blurring out he was such an uh, affable person and such an open hearted person that all the clients were his 
friends and he opened the studios to everybody whoever was coming if, if he wanted to stay there he in fact made a room a full room a guest room for his friends to come and stay uh, collaborators to come and stay and he opened his studios he says you want you don't have a place to say you come and stay in our studio so he actually made a room and called it the um, scholars, scholars room, room. So, and it was really interesting because we landed up keeping a guest book over there for all the people who came there. They would come and write their little comments and all, which turned out to be a very interesting book on its own. And so this next next item, uh, that's the door to room 113, so to say. And why the room is numbered 113 is another story altogether. I think the signage was made for a hotel project. It's a sample it was a sign. sample sign, and they didn't want to use the number one one three for whatever reason. So, uh, boss said, "Okay, we are going to have our guest room named one one three. So be it." <laughs> so we've had a lot of friends, uh, clients, uh, who've come and stayed here and had written some wonderful things in the guest book, and this is a copy of that. And it's a group, and it's a bunch of comments, sketches, paintings, and uh, for example, this. Who's this guy? This one is. This one is. Okay, specs. Not sure. Just read with that. So all of them would come and either draw or sketch or get inspired by some place in the garden and do a painting of that and so it became like a, the guest book became like a little art piece altogether and it was something that boss was very happy seeing and flipping over. And where collaborations and friendships led to things was what led to boss uh, getting in touch with a Colombian architect by the name of uh, Simone. Simone Velez. Mm -hmm. And he is, uh, his expertise lies in bamboo construction. And uh, Boss had taken up some land which is near a farm, farmland near the Sultanpur bird sanctuary in a village called Sadrana. And over there he developed the whole place with such love and affection. And one of the buildings, there are three buildings over there. It's one right of here. the buildings, yeah, that's that's a good example. Has so a bamboo one roof. One of the buildings is a bamboo roof which he made with uh, in collaboration with Simon. It's actually one of a kind. I think Vidya, you should talk about that. You were a part of that whole so, exercise and about Sadrana Bagh. Simon uh, Venez is probably the world, world's most world. renowned architect building with bamboo and we got in touch with him uh, through the National Mission for Bamboo yeah. Association. They had asked us to be a part and advise them on how to bring about the use of bamboo in architecture in a more contemporary way and uh, Pradeep Sachdeva being Pradeep Sachdeva reached out across the world <laughs> and uh, Simon became a best friend and brother and he is one of the guests of 113 and has written uh, I Some think wonderful one, in one of the pages yeah, yeah. Is, uh, uh, and beyond just having had a few workshops and trainings by Simon Velez in India we also went, like this is I think the first project that one collaborated with in doing a bamboo uh, roof. Uh, beyond this, we one went on to do the, um, the Shanghai Pavilion, Shanghai Pavilion the dome, Expo. which is the yeah. largest dome uh, ever made in bamboo, in bamboo in yeah. about 30 meter, 32 meters span. So uh, that's the story uh, of how he interacted with people, maintained relationships with people, and it all just became a part. Yeah, and that's how it led to so many projects and uh, exactly. so many collaborations that way. In fact, the roof that they developed for uh, this building at the Kate, as we call it, which is uh, uh, Pradeep's farm area, was it's, it's in fact the most unique thing made in the country. It's a large bamboo roof and nothing like that has been made in the country. So it's a very unique thing. In fact, at the uh, Khet itself, and why we call it Khet is another story which I'll just come to. He has another very interesting uh, building over there, which was a uh, old house in Kerala, which he transported from Kerala, which was being demolished and you know dismantled, etc. 
so he got the chance to actually transport that over here and bring it here and build it from scratch and it's 300 years it's old it's 300 years old it's amazing because you know at 300 years old iron was not there so they had no nails so all the joinery of the wood was all through wooden joinery so each of the pieces were labeled and numbered and only the workers from kerala were the ones who could really put it out and put it together again so he called all of them they were staying at the cave for months and they put up this building so all the buildings which are there at the cave are all upcycled or they have uh, some interesting story behind it and besides that i think pradeep had a passion for farming and gardening and i think he was he used to call himself a kisan he says i'm a farmer at heart you know which is why and the mustard oil bottle. that's what uh, <laughs> brings me to this that you know he used to have to, uh, fields of mustards i think that's the local uh, you know planting in that area and he went for it and since the khet has been there we've all been enjoying organic mustard oil. amazing cold mustard oil mustard cold oil. pressed <laughs> mustard oil and this is a it's like a trademark everybody who comes to our studio is always asking for it it's amazing and we thought it's an important part of uh, you know his material memories because how uh, special it is and it kind of attaches itself to sadrana ba to the cave that we are talking about and it was his passion for you know plants and landscape which started i think with a project we did in the late 1990s which was the garden of five senses uh, it, that's another project done by the studio and at that point of a time i vidya was completely involved with that project and both pradeep and vidya started teaching themselves about plants and about materials they went all over the country clicking pictures taking photographs uh, learning about plants speaking to nurseries malis uh, horticulturists i mean you name it it was a self learning curve for both of them and uh, that's what really led to the next uh, and the last item that we have over here they both uh, they co-authored these books called trees and shrubs of india and garden flowers of india this has been co-authored by vidya and by pradeep sashdeva and it was an amazing journey for them i think because they turned out to be wonderful and i think vidya can give us a bit of a story on that so I came to be co-authoring a book uh, quite accidentally because <laughs> it was supposed to be Pradeep Sajdeva and Vikram Grewal. Yes, of course. Guy who were, they were supposed to co-author this book, and I came back from a year of taking a sabbatical off work, and I was very excited that they were doing a book and offered to actually uh, give pictures, uh, you know, do the photographs for them for the book. but instead uh, i think bikram was doing a book on birds already at that mm. point and said no you do the co you could be the co-author instead of me and that's how i came to be in this story all together <laughs> and then you were completely involved in it <laughs> yes uh, we started documenting uh, plants uh, photographing researching as arti said when we were uh, we began designing the garden of five senses went to every park in delhi uh, with a camera uh, a picnic uh, picnic basket picnic basket packed yes. to take pictures of plants and learn what survives what is native what is exotic and i don't think we've really distinguished or been partial towards native or exotic but we've just gone to learn about plants and how to use them and probably the best example that i can show of of this is uh you know a picture here in this book which is of the baobab tree mm. and here is a picture which shows probably 500 years old uh baobab tree in orcha uh and we never went out of our way to photograph this was Maharaj of Orcha called Pradeep uh, to um, come and see one of his places and give advice on how to make it into a guest uh, facility. And we'd heard of these old baobab trees uh, in Orcha. 
So we went out in the fields with the camera and looking for these uh, super old trees. And this is what we found. And there's all uh, this is a picture without me, but there's also what he always put a person in the in front so of that the tree for scale. For scale. Uh, that picture is not here, thankfully. <laughs> it should have been here. <laughs> and what you see on the right is a baobab tree in the garden of five senses, which we planted in about 2004 or 2003. So uh, this just goes to show that what we went out to learn, we e eventually did implement it. And we found a 10 year old baobab tree in a nursery, uh, which we installed at the center of the garden of five senses as you enter. And today that tree is a huge tree and even flowers, uh, you know, this, so this is a more recent picture, of course, of the tree. Mm -hmm. But I think that just goes to illustrate that um, our whole idea of going and learning and seeing uh, what is out there actually did, uh, you know, invest into the project itself. And also became, this book came about thanks to the documentation that we had done for the last 15-20 years on taking pictures. It was never intended for, for a book, it was more for just learning. And that did come together as uh, two books now. In fact, while going through a lot of the archival material which I was doing in the past uh, year and a half, in the, you know, in the whole attempt of archiving, creating the PSDA archives, I came across so many pictures, you know, the old style pictures and negatives of trees and flowering plants and anything green essentially, which was all clicked by, uh, with, by Boss and by Vidya. And so it was a long journey and they've, I mean, it's, it's amazing how much has been accomplished and put into practice and put into action actually. So it's been a great journey for the them. The story of those <laughs> little yes. unboxing and all the material memories. Yeah, and I think this kind of it. at least somewhat described who Pradeep was as a person. As an architect, is it a whole different ball game altogether? But this, I think, uh, somewhat describes him and all and his also passions and lives. The influences lives. that he had on all of us. Oh, uh, yes. It's quite, you can see in all of these pictures, <laughs> all of these materials. Absolutely. I think that's what it is. Yeah. But you say um, it is a very different volume to describe him as an architect. How different would it be from all of this? Um, not very different, but I just meant to say that the type of material which is there is, is different from all this. He was, I think like Vidya has very aptly described him, he was a very eclectic man. He was a man of varied, uh, you know, interests and passions. And architecture was a great passion of his, that was his, you know, thing that really made him thrive. And it's amazing, I can share this with you that whether he was designing a bathroom or he was designing a big urban scale project like you know for example the Chandni Chok redevelopment it was uh, it was done with equal amount of passion dedication and hard work i mean it was it was for him it didn't matter the size of the project or what the name was or anything so it was he was just he was a passionate person so whether it was architecture practice or any of the other interests of his I think that's one common string between the two things. But I mean, this doesn't show this all, his nature reflects in the architecture that he practiced, which was, I think, very simple and uh, very strong at the same time. So, if you would want to add something to that. Describe it perfectly. <laughs> um, okay, I can ask questions, but in the meanwhile, if you both have any questions. <laughs> Do, uh, sorry, I don't know your name. Do you have any questions? For no. um, the second thing, which is, I think it's, it's a more of a connected question, is um, why I asked that question about is it different when you see him as an architect and when you describe all of these items? Is to say, does it change your perception of how you would write about this architecture now that you have been engaged in this exercise for one and a half years? You know, um, because that is the plan. And that is, is the plan. The audience, of course, absolutely. That is the plan. And it's, it's actually a very interesting question because when we were all actively working in the studio with him before his demise, 
we never thought about him, many many things about him it was all somewhat i can say take the liberty of saying that we took it for granted or took some things that he did for granted or how he was the past two years have been um, very insightful in terms of once he's not there in the studio anymore we are kind of we are hearing what people are saying about him we are seeing a lot of the things which maybe we didn't discuss with him but now we are looking at it so it doesn't the content of course doesn't change we always knew that he was a dedicated person and for him the project came before himself you know that has always been the case and his uh, architecture pra architectural practice has always been contextual but uh, I think we all have been a little more um, insightful as to who he was as a person than before. That has been the case. Yudhi, you Anything? have been sort of away from the office for slowly stepping out. <laughs> so does this process of archiving and looking back into his memories, especially I think also it's happening a bit too soon after he's gone. Yeah. Which has its pros and cons, I'm sure. Well, one has never been too far away from PSD, I can tell you that much. Uh, it's not possible. Not possible. Because once you're part of it, uh, you'll always be a part of it. Uh, but what I do realize, having completed a few projects uh, in the last, say, uh, one year or so, we completed, say, Changni Chok. Uh, uh, I was working on finishing it after he passed away. Um, while we were working at designing it, while we were working at discussing it, one, uh, I mean, one knew that it was an important project to be documented. But at the same time, it was not until uh, that he he passed away and that we actually completed the project and people recognized the value of project just how important it was to have documented uh, step by step uh, the the ideas that went into it the issues that uh, were resolved by it etc i think it's very important that uh, we think, yeah. documented in some form that can reach a wider audience because it's not just the architects or the urban planners who are interested in Changni Chok and the redevelopment of Changni Chok. Yes. And this is just one of the projects that he did. There were many more such projects. But this is just an example of why this archival uh, pro uh, project has been so important. And hopefully, this is the next step to formally documenting all the projects and uh, bringing it out Absolutely. and making it I available to people. That, that's the whole idea, to make it available to people because I think uh, one thing that he was very uh, open about was knowledge sharing. He never kept anything behind closed doors. It is there for everybody to see and I mean to share whatever he has done, his experiences, his mistakes with everyone else. So I think that was, I, I just feel that you know when uh, I would say this to everybody out there that when you are designing a project or whatever project you are doing documentation is important as well because somewhere down the line it could be a miss you know to the process of the whole uh, end product because everybody just sees the end product but uh, the process also requires a little bit of respect i think which is something we realized a little late but we have still got a lot of material together and are in the process of making the PSDA archives. It's a very long mammoth task, but uh, it's a beginning, and this is the beginning of that, I would say. To start with him, who he was as a person, and build up the architectural part of it as well. Yeah, I totally agree with you, um, with Dr. Exactly, yeah. I agree. I agree. That's it. I think that's it. Thank good. you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us, Ishita. You feel closer to having notes and videos than you've been reading about. <laughs> and sometimes I'm wondering, I mean, now this is just reflection because it happened day before yesterday also. It's, it's never been easy to reach up to reach people and like reach out to I mean of course now when I hear I'm realizing yeah, I would have written a mail to Pradeep such they were able to reply. But when otherwise the structures are such where you feel a distance, can I write to somebody, can I get to know them? So this a lot of knowing is happening after people are born or when the projects are being or are being seen in that light of um, 
preserving their memory of uh, their being. And, and I think the only bigger question it leaves is, of course, authenticity or what would it have been like in their own words. But I don't think that's an answer which we all have now. Hmm. It's just nice because even right now when you took me through, see, seeing the objects was very different. And the stories you said yeah. um, make you feel a little much more closer. In fact, that's how I felt when I visited PSD as well. But if I had known, I would have liked to work here or do something. Hmm. But till you don't experience these stories, yeah. it feels like there's always a distance between employer and employee, applied, architecture student, or senior architect. Suddenly these stories seem to be bridging that. Yeah, we hope to do that through the archives, to dissolve that gap and to dissolve that distance. Yeah, I mean, that, yeah, that, that's, that's the that intention. Be wonderful, yeah. actually. Uh, so it doesn't remain just uh, yeah. another architect's uh, memorial. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you.